Maple Hill is one of the most special places for me. I think the people are special, the course is historic, and then the fact that it is the second playoff event, you know the points are so important. Corey Ellis, I think he's been throwing the disc extremely well this year. It goes without saying that he's one of the better putters on tour. This place is super specific with the lines you have to throw. I really think he's going to have to be on point with his, his lines, no left, no right. And close all year, you're going to have to scrap out a win. That's how you win out here. It's going to take a lot of patience from Gannon, which we've seen that he has. Definitely wise beyond his years. I just think it's going to be a great battle between the, the two of them. Both haven't won at the elite level, and they both have a really great shot at it. Clearly, Linus is an incredible woods player. We just saw him a couple weeks ago compete for the win, and that's one of the most wooded courses we've seen all year. His line is very controlled. When he's throwing backhands well and he's making putts, I mean, he's as dangerous as a player as anyone. We've seen Thomas Gilbert play well, but we've also seen him struggle in pressure situations. However, he just came off of the big Canadian Nationals win, which I'm sure is a boost of confidence for him. He loves this course, he loves this area. He can play really well in the woods. A win's gonna, you know, kind of catapult them to the top of like a confidence level of, oh, I can do this at any weekend. And we had Gannon lose to Drew Gibson at the season opening event in Las Vegas. You know, Corey lost in the playoff over at the Great Lakes Open. They've been so close knocking on the door. Breaking on through that door and getting into the winner's circle is going to mean the world to these guys. You know that they know that their opportunity is right there in front of them today. Hello everyone and welcome to the final round of the MVP Open at Maple Hill here in Leicester, Massachusetts. Big Barry commentary bringing you today's final action, the excitement from the famed Maple Hill course, Jeremy Colling joined by Paul Uliberry. And real, real quick, I wanna get into, we have stocked a whole bunch of new discs on our website. We've got selections, we've got the Shomez, we've got the Nomez, Nomez. we've got the new transit stamp. Some of these discs are getting low in stock though, so you might wanna go ahead and head over to our website, jomaspro.com, to get these because this is the last time these stamps yeah. will ever be produced. So get those now, otherwise, sorry, you lost your chance. Corey Ellis, first place. 12 Apparently. under. 12 so under. I, to me, surprising number. I feel like it could have been a little lower, but with the crazy weather that we've had, I mean, it's a great score. 44% birdie so far, and that, and that goes back to round one and round two where it was incredibly windy. 12 under is a great score to be at through two rounds. Gannon Burr is the closest person to him. He has a three-stroke lead over Gannon, but Gannon right now has not missed the putt inside the circle. And Linus right now, he has 86% scramble. I think he's only taken just the one bogey on hole. Yeah. I forget what hole it was, but yeah, other than that, he has played incredibly clean. Hole 10 yesterday, exactly. He got halfway through the event without a bogey. Thomas Gilbert, once again, in the mix. He is four back. Circle one in regulation. He's giving himself a ton of opportunities. Look at that, parked 17%, also leading the field. Just throwing the disc really well off the tee. We all know Thomas's putter can get hot. When that happens and the driving's going well, I mean, anything can happen today. Hole one, par four, 853 feet. Big carry at this pond isn't gonna be a real factor for any of these guys to throw it too far, but this island will be. It's gonna be a question whether you wanna lay up, take the easy par on one of the harder holes on the course, or start off with a bird. Virginia, Corey Ellis. This is coming in as the eighth hardest hole, which is probably because of its difficulty, honestly. I think a lot of people are laying up to the mouth and taking the easy part. Well, you're also seeing the wind down here. Corey going big hyzer, not going to get into a position where I think he's going to be able to attack unless he gets a lucky break through these trees. But with the wind down, I mean, this really opens up a huge opportunities for these players to get big distance, and that obviously makes this hole a ton more attackable. Only two birdies first round, a few more the second round, but this third round's going to see quite a bit more. Yeah, and the thing about this round as well is it's going to be drizzly all day. A little drizzly, the winds are down, still windy. That's a great drive. It's in front of everything. 
We'll have 232 or so into the pin. Linus Carlson. Linus Carlson is trying to become the first international player not named Jesper Lundmark, Marcus Schallström, or Simon Lazat to win an elite series or major event. I mean, that is a elite group of players. A lot of players have come over from Europe who have not quite been able to hit that winner's circle. But Linus has put himself in great position, not only in this event, but off the tee on hole one. From Toronto, Ontario, Thomas Gilbert. Well, then we gotta put Thomas Gilbert in that category as well. Yeah, absolutely we would. The Canadian Nationals champion coming into this event with a lot of good feelings and playing some really good disc golf. And he's just an absolute master of the disc. And right there, you could see that rain coming down. It will certainly be a factor at different points of the round. And you can see how far left Corey is. Thomas is also left, but Gannon Burr and Linus Carlson are in great position. The basket is kind of up there where you see that road leading into the woods on the right side of your screen. Yeah, that's like the perfect place to land. Mm -hmm. And Corey's in no position to go for it. Thomas is, though. You know he's gunning at this bad boy. Keeping it low, and that is actually, if you're going to make a mistake on this hole, keeping it low is great because that wall will protect you from yep. going out of bounds. And look at really? this. Really? Playing it smart, hitting the OB rocks, but bouncing back into the mouth. And I feel like that's just too short to lay up. What? Really? Gannon jump putting it to the opening. A bit surprising coming into this round. I mean, you can have... I would say half of these holes are two-stroke swing holes, if not yeah. more. So three strokes doesn't maybe necessarily feel like that much. And you can easily take a starting five and feel like you've taken yourself out of it, even though that might not be the case. Mm -hmm. But it really surprises to not see some of these guys go for the screen, aside from Thomas. And he came up well short. Mm okay. That should be but good Gannon's so good with the putter, he might think he can just make it from there. Well, I don't think he's going to be laying it up. He might. He just lays up everything. And he lays it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, maybe that's part of the game plan. Give yourself a, a nice, stress-free, easy par on the first hole. I mean, nothing wrong with it, honestly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're not... You're not really losing ground of the field. The hole averages 3.99. So you're literally just staying right there, par for the course. If Corey can get off to a hot start like he did in round two, we saw him, what, a four-hole birdie streak where he made so many putts. Yeah. If he can get some early birdies and give himself some insurance, it's going to make these other guys really have to go into attack mode if they want to try to catch him. And he's got to feel like it's it's close to being his time. I mean, he's been there so many times now, as have so many players. I mean, we've talked about just the list of players who've been there in the mix and haven't quite gotten over that hump. Hole two, just a straight shooter. You're going to see people go to the left, bend it to the right. If this gets over this little guardian rock pile, ah, it's so kind of home free, but it's not. He's going to have to earn it from circle two's edge. We did see Macbeth hit that putt yesterday. It is very makeable, but it is a long way up that hill. The shot that you're wanting to do is this right here. Drift it from left to right in front of the trees. That's it. Because okay. then you stay away from that bogey tree on the right over there by the wall. The perfect line that's, is like right at that that's tree. That's essentially perfect. That shot had no chance yes. of really hitting the tree or going out of bounds. This one's going to be pushing that right side, no, but it's is... got the stability towards the end. Yeah, that's just okay. didn't quite have the, the height or the forward pace that Ganon had, but pretty much perfect. Yeah, you're never going to complain about that one. 
This better be stable. It's trying to work itself. Oh, what a tree kick. That's the first time I've ever <laughs> wow. seen that tree be nice. That is a mean tree. You were absolutely right about it. What a forward kick there for Thomas. He loves it. And Corey, a little bit hot. That's going to be a downhill yeah, semi tester. Unable to capitalize. Lena's able to capitalize on two really good shots there. That's a great birdie. Good momentum going into the next few holes. Set it over and over again. Getting an early start under par on this course is so essential. Oh, boy. That one goes in and out. That's a bogey. That's one over par for the first two holes. It's just crucial to avoid the, the unnecessary mistakes there. The three putt is just something that you, you just can't you can't do that there. And especially with the uphill run, it's hard to go that far past the basket. Mm -hmm. Corey not doing himself any favors there, unfortunately. But on to hole three. This is a nice birdie to pick up. If you can get this now, you can kind of settle the nerves a bit. I'm sure they're definitely high. 407 feet as straight as you can possibly throw it but really the play ends up being a left to right flex shot I'm trying to think of who has the perfect form to hit this hole i think like a bradley williams late flip but oh um, yeah Maybe. but there's so many people i mean gannon burr the way he's throwing shots in the woods yeah sub him in you know who i think would oh, oh my gosh just, oh, um, trying to go Dave on Felberg door. on hole three. I don't. I can't say who I was gonna say now because we're we're going with Gannon. Down, sit. sit down, he says. Yeah, he knows it's coming oh. with steam. Oh. <laughs> and just don't forget, Gannon Burr's first ever ace, not just filmed ace, not like in a tournament round. First ever ace was earlier this year in the skins match. It's the way he throws the disc. You, it just Unreal, but that's my pick was going to wow. be Venus. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, it was. Uh, I really think of a Nico Lacastro with the four silver flex. Uh -huh. Needs to beat that one. Now it needs to get really overstable. Wow, Still, these drives great. are showing why our lead card Leads? has these three guys. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. These four guys. I feel like this is a big drive for Corey. Oh no! Just gonna hit that middle one. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's great shot. I mean, the it, shot you wouldn't change the shot yeah. shape at all. Mm -mm. It was a great, a really committed line. Yep. And you just have to beat that tree left side or right side, and you're happy with your shot. Unfortunately, he connected square, and now he has to scramble. Just needs to get through these. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that that should be fine. Good up. Thomas Gilbert. Yeah, buddy. There you go. This side, left side catches for Thomas. And a nice birdie. Fourth hardest hole on the course. Linus has got two birdies. This is starting to feel a bit like Corey's start yesterday. Mm -hmm. For him and Gannon. Gannon's closer than all of them. And he, in my opinion, is... The better putter than the other two. Corey Ellis and him would have a putting you would, battle. I, I mean, Gannon versus Corey in a putt off right now. Gannon's winning, obviously, with Corey's miss on hole two. But, I mean. It's, it's in, I think, top five putters on tour. Yeah. I'm taking Corey Burr or Gannon Ellis. <laughs> I mean, you can't go wrong with either one of those picks. 11%, just about, what, how many, eight birdies? Nine birdies on the day out of the field. It's a good hole, one to get. Yeah, we saw two of them right there. Hole four, par three, 246, just a trickster. A lot of ground play is, is the issue here, and then this tiny gap that you have to hit off the tee. 
Other than that, they really, with that wall back there, kind of took the OB out of play for a lot of these guys, unless you miss really high. This is really fun to watch, oh. though. This guy's going to jump putt. I like it. And it's going to work He's out. He's going Heiser jump putt. I played with him one of the rounds, and he did that right there. Heiser jump putt. All the way down there. I mean, we've seen him jump putt from 180 feet. This is 246 downhill. Why not? Yeah, if that's your result, deal. Great throw. And this is a flex shot that Linus plays. Kind of, they're kind of tricking the hole. Oh, why are these? These guys are finding every year people find new ways of breaking the straight shot. Just throw the straight shot, folks. Another putt? Kind of putt. I think he's going down the middle. Yeah. Or at least trying to. He's jump putting it as well. Go in. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I'm what gonna, a shot. I'm going to say next year they're changing this hole. I'm just going to say it. I, I would like to see a net high so you, people like you don't get to throw your dumb little thumbers. Everyone's got to throw a straight shot. Yeah, you can do that. Corey, early tree, just a little bit off for the moment. Let's see if we can get things turned in the right direction. He's going to have another tester putt for the par. Meanwhile, Gannon and Linus, his closest competitors, have putts for birdie, and Linus, once again, he has now taken the lead. Wow, that was quick. That was fast. Out of nowhere out here, man. You got to be really on important it. Putt. Really, really important putt for Corey. But the slow start, one over through four. Four and five just feel like must-gets. You, mm -hmm. you know what's upcoming. Six and seven can just really eat your lunch. So these two shots, the tee shot on four and the tee shot on five, are just so important. And three players were able to putt their way down the hill. Well, Linus was more of a throw, but still incredible stuff there. It was important for me to partner with a retailer that could help with growing my brand and making my products available all over the country and across the world. Flight Factory has helped me accomplish that. Check out all of my gear and thousands of other discs at Flight Factory. On to hole five. The second of these two must get early holes. 262 feet. It's a high, stable forehand that carries over the water and just tries to crash into the basket. It's been aced many times in the past and it's been aced a couple times earlier today. Can anyone on this card? Up high. Gets through everything. That is just peachy. Just missing those early limbs that we saw Macbeth hit mm -hmm. in round two. I feel like this turnover shot is quite scary, but Linus has no problem with getting it turned over and in bounds and hits a nice tree. He will have a slightly, yeah, that's a scary putt from outside C1. With no wind on this hole, it's pretty much hit the gap and you're good to go. I like the width here for Thomas. <sighs> that was wow, that was close to our where, third ace. Yeah, I don't know whether he was too high or just in front or just. I thought behind. the height was great. I think he might have just hyzered right behind it. Oh, Corey, no. this has got to move. Mm. And the nightmare start has continued for Corey. Not only has he lost his three shot lead, he is in danger of being three or maybe four, or maybe five shots back. I mean, what is, this is horrible. Sit. And he's got work for the double. Mm. Big putt here for Linus. God, that's looking that good. Exactly the exact same start that we saw from Corey yesterday. 
and you have Nightmare Start and Dream Start on the same card right now. Can Ganon connect as well? My goodness. Four through five for two players on the card. None of them named Ellis. Ellis is going to be three over, seven stroke swing. Maybe three over. He could be four over if he doesn't make this. That's true. Okay, yeah, left gets side. It in there. And Thomas is going to be th three under. Well, he's, he's kind of far too. Oh, no, he's not. It should be easy work. Three under, four under, four under. Three over. Alden Harris, Tristan Tanner. One timers. One timers. Hole six, par three, 390. The most stressful hole, I think, on the course. Out of bounds right, out of bounds left. It's a very specific shot. You might see a couple sidearms, maybe backhands anything you can do to get to that corner and then hope that you get a little lucky through the woods sidearm from Gannon here he needs it to be a little bit turned over he gets it turned over this, too much yeah that's gonna end the birdie streak and this is kind of the birdie streak ender yeah but is he too far back to save the par that's gonna be a very important approach he might be able to jump put it from there. Whoa. Linus, what an incredible break to not get slammed left by just barely hitting that tree. I mean, that looked like it had recipe for super kick left. Oh, I like this. Yeah, Thomas. This is going to go past the basket. Heads up, everybody. What? That was going to go way past the basket if it didn't hit that tree. That was insane. No, that was so much pace. 100 foot skip almost. Big tee shot here. This could get out of hand quick unless he goes here. Oh, like that. that is nice. Just don't kick left. That's fine. I mean, he'll be able yeah. to get up and down from there, and that's a nice calming feeling. Hit a gap. And he's going with the... Whoa. Okay. Kind of a good kick. He's yeah. got an open look from about... 45? Yeah, 50, 45, yeah. And Linus, he's also looking at a bogey putt, or a par putt, but looking at a potential for bogey. That was an awesome little kick, though, to give him a putt. And look what Corey's got left. That was a good putt. Just to get it to there. All right. Got to get it a little higher. He always seems like he has the pace on it. Venus now, can he take care of a nice break that he go? Oh, no. Sit. So, this is a tricky green. It, it gets a little quick past the basket. Yeah, it slopes a little bit away. And Thomas, man, an incredible drive. Even though it was going to go long, he probably would have preferred the length considering that left kick ended up putting him in a spot where he really didn't have a look for the putt. But it will be bogeys for Linus and Gannon. And Corey and Thomas should be tapping in their pars. So one back for Corey in the right direction for him at least. Even though it's not a birdie, it feels like a birdie in many ways, especially when Linus and, Car and Gannon have just been killing it. And I got to give another shout out. Right after Tristan aces hole five, I played with him. He birdies six, and I was just thinking three strokes on those two holes is beating most people's score on just six alone. Oh, yeah. That's, that is crazy. It was pretty cool to see that happen back to back. Anyways, on to hole seven. I mean, the road hole. It's just uphill and it's treacherous. It's a it's a nightmare hole. Yeah, throw it as straight as you can. I mean, this is like one of those holes where you could go mid-range, fairway, fast driver, whatever you're hitting gaps with, I would say go with that. So whatever Thomas just threw, don't do don't. Pick well, he picked the wrong Yeah, the, the first kick wasn't so bad because it was going forward. 
The second kick ended up turning it into a roller, and now he's actually found an easy uphill putt, perhaps, for the par. Kind of fortunate. Corey's heading left, kicking right. Not bad. And look at that thing with the movement. Oh. That's another pretty simple up and down for the par. I feel like puring six really gives you a lot of confidence on seven. I mean, it can be the same shot shape if you're choosing a mid-range or a fairway driver. Oh, boy. Every year, Top. people get, like... Yeah, better. No, they just... <laughs> On this one, somebody throws it right down that gap and mm -hmm. puts it to 20, and I just kind of in awe. Oh, no. You would rather be on the right side, I feel like. He is comfortable with the harp forehand approaches. Let's see if he's able to scramble. That's a great shot. Those six was just Linus's second bogey of the event. And with that scramble, he will keep it at two for now. Oh, that's an unfortunate tree kick. And the really rude roll away after. That's, that's one that Thomas has got to clean up. A lot of airspace to the right side. Yeah, they got far up here. And Corey not just content for playing for par. He runs that. Well, he has to at this point. I mean, three over, you're running everything now. Kind of takes the pressure off him a little bit. I feel like he can play a little more free. And not only does he see that he doesn't have the lead here as Thomas misses that par putt, but there are other guys on the, on the course right now that are right around this score. Oh, no. That's a heartbreaker. Mm hmm Gannon has built his form around a, a pitch putt that comes out with a lot of pace, but a pitch putt typically allows you to putt in pressure situations without really sacrificing what a spin putt has. And when you're off with a spin putt, you don't know where the putt is going. When you just... The arm goes up in the same way every time like Gannon's does. He's just got to get the height right because the disc is going straight at the basket every time. But the problem is when he gets those nerves, he still sometimes short arms it. And that's, a, that's the miss that we see from him more often than not. One of the most beautiful water carries we have. And there's another one on this course that's just on the other side of this little land area. That's hole 14 coming up later on. But for now, 364 feet to the basket and you're gonna have an entire awesome crowd. Yeah, oh, here we go. We're finally showing the raucous crowd. Look at these guys and girls. What a group. Oh, Corey. That's good. No, nah, that's, that's working. It's hyzering back. There we go. That, that could really be a confidence booster for him. Yeah, he this needs is this. a tough one, mm -hmm. man. Eight's right there in front of you, but I saw a lot of people go out of bounds on this hole. A lot. This is looking great, too. Come on, Gannon. Come on, Gannon. Two off the cage for Gannon. Are you 
Yeah. I had I truly had no clue that he did what he did on three or what he did right here on eight. This is <laughs> I didn't even hear about this. Oh, it was perfect too. And oh, could you imagine if he actually had one of the ones? That would just be the worst. Look at he kinda got a good break to stand bounds. He did. And <laughs> Corey saying, I did that yesterday. It's not flipping. He's going to have to really get some. Needs the speed. Oh, he skips over the wall or just left of it. Either way. I don't think it had the juice, mm -hmm. you know, to get back all the way to the, to the safe side there. This needs help, too. Um, OTB chant coming up real quick. It's <laughs> awesome. I want flag bears everywhere. Linus for the par. Wow. Conservative pace to have him change his pace that much just to avoid any potential OBOB -OB situation. That was a good effort. And his comes out with fire. Mm -hmm. He's one of those Gannon Bird types that can jump putt from 150 easily. Him, Isaac, Gannon. Gannon getting that one high enough. Nothing better than hitting metal off the tee and then also making the putt. And he's so close to having that 2-2-2 two, 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 or 2-2. Mm -hmm. two, two. He could have really gone for it on one, honestly. It was so close. He was in a great position, honestly. That, that really was a, a, a surprise to see him lay up from such an aggressive tee shot. Mm -hmm. Bogey for Linus. It's going to put him at two under for the round and kind of put a halt to that hot start that he had. Hole nine par four, 400 feet up the hill, then back down the hill. Dealer's choice, putter, mid-range driver, thumber. I saw a, what, do you, what is that thing that Kevin Jones throws? A grenade. Grenade. He said he's getting to the island with a grenade. Tristan Tanner told me he hit the bucket, the base of it, in practice with the, the flippiest grenade he's ever thrown. He said he hit the base and the spotter lost his mind. I believe it. I would lose my mind if I saw that. Top of the hill. Yeah, and that's really all he played for. He wasn't going for the aggressive turnover. A good shot for Corey. Bad kick. Bad, bad kick. How deep did that go? have to just wait and see. I have no whoa. This Thomas. Potential. Sit down. Oh, what? I mean, that's... Oh, my. That's the longest feet. drive I've ever seen on the hole. Four. Four in the fairway? That is a... That's as good as you're going to see a backhand turnover thrown. Aside from Thomas getting lucky and not going out of bounds. Yeah. There's Gannon laying up. Yeah, that's so a good I, out. I don't know where he was, but it was good. Goes for it from there. <sighs> yeah, I can't imagine. Very touchy approach here. Corey nails it. Great shot. That is so hard to get the height to get just over the wall, but not going 30 feet past the basket from that elevated stance. That is such a hard thing to do. Requires perfect touch. Linus just jump putting his way across. And now Gannon, what does he do? Up. Yeah, that was conservative. Thomas has a, a birdie putt after going OB off the tee. Wow. A little awkward straddle, but so close. And a Took nice, his time, yeah. Yep. Nice bounce back. 
staying at 12 under or getting back to 12 under, I should say. And Tom is in for the par. And Corey's got back to 11 under. He's one over on the nine, but things are starting to move in the right direction for him. Four under is a good start. I mean, that's kind of the number that we circle. I don't think that he thought in his head, Gannon, that if he shot four under in the front nine, that that would be enough to catch and then pass right. yeah. Corey, especially not by two shots, but that's the case. And as we see here, Macbeth is playing incredible. Ricky Wysocki, imagine that. These two guys at this course, what? Simon Lazat, he's right there in the mix. Simon was two over after the first round. Then he shot a course record tying performance eight under yesterday, and now he is also right there in the mix. There's a slew of scores that are all in contention, nine holes remaining, and we don't just have the leaders on our feature card today, our lead card, in those top four spots, so things are getting crazy out here. Thank you.